going on today. And um, we hope that you will work with us so we can expeditiously <coughs> get through the agenda. At this time, I'm going to ask Dr. Keel if you would come and lead us in the pledge. Thank you, Dr. Keel. At this time, I would like to recognize any uh, special guests that we have in the audience. Of course, you all are special, but uh, those elected officials, if there are any, would you please stand? Any elected officials? Seeing none, perhaps some will come in at a later time. Thank you so much. Um, at this time, we are going to move on into our special recognition, and uh, Ms. Brown, uh, we're not giving you much time to breathe, are we? And while Ms. Brown is coming, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of the parents and the staff of the Metropolitan National Public Schools for working so hard during graduation. Um, we had many, many, many. How many did we have, Dr. Reggie? Do you remember? There were so many, I can't, I stopped counting when we started going to four a day. But, <laughs> but we do appreciate um, all of you and parents that, um, that are not here with us today, but uh, in the viewing audience. And we want to say thank you to you um, and congratulations to all of uh, our students. Ms. Brady. Okay, great. Okay, good afternoon. The, the school year ended last week but the school year really hasn't ended until we recognize some very special students who have um, wonderful academic achievements uh, for this year and throughout their high school careers and I guess their whole entire school careers. So we're very fortunate to have some of those students and their families with us here tonight to be honored by the board and um, if they would come forward when I call their name and I'm going to do my very best to pronounce everyone's name correctly and I apologize if any of them, um, if I mess up a little bit, but I'm going to do my best. Okay, we're going to be taking a picture with each one, so if you can stay up for a picture. Um, so first of all, we would like to uh, recognize our valedictorians and salutatorians who are able to be with us here this evening. Um, the first one that we would like to recognize is from Antioch High School, and that's Jerrica Jackson. She's the valedictorian. to recognize the valedictorian from Nashville Big Picture and that's Madeline Sage. <laughs> Our uh, valedictorian from Cane Ridge High School, Zachary Serco. Next we have from Hillwood High School, the valedictorian Abed Zain Zabato. Thank you. 
Our valedictorian from um, Hume Fogg High School, Emily Alsenser. Our salutatorian from Hume Fogg High School, Austin Paul. From Hunters Lane, valedictorian Lamisha Wales. <laughs> also from Hunters Lane, valedictorian Casey Armstrong. From Maplewood High School, we have valedictorian Malcolm Beckpo. <laughs> From McGavick High School, Valedictorian Jessica Massey. <laughs> From Middle College High School, we have our salutatorian Aaron C.A. From John Overton High School, valedictorian Carolyn Yuan. From Pearl Cone High School, valedictorian Abigail Harris. <laughs> From Pearl Cone High School, salutatorian Deanna Bush. From Stratford High School, valedictorian Crystal Preston.
from Stratford High School, salutatorian Timothy Cunningham. And again from Stratford High School, salutatorian Ananza Guzman. From White's Creek High School, valedictorian Caitlin Carter. From Wise Creek High School, salutatorian Adrian Whitman. Before we move on to the next category, are there any other salutatorians or valedictorians who may have come in? Okay, so moving on, we want to recognize um, from Hume Fogg, Jaron Rotman Yang, a National Merit Finalist. Also from Him Fogg, Fiona Sappenfield, National Merit Finalist. Are there any other National Merit finalists or National Achievement finalists who have joined us? Okay, from Hume Fogg, Austin Paul, National Merit finalist. And from MLK, Ben Gu, National Merit Finalist. Also from MLK, Ronald Webb, National Achievement Finalist. So we have four students with us this evening who have perfect attendance throughout their school careers. We'll start with Adam Woods from Hume Fogg.
Also with perfect attendance from Hume Fogg, Amber Carter. From Cane Ridge High School, John Cawthon. Perfect attendance. <laughs> also from Cane Ridge High School, Ashley Harnest. I know the answer to at least one of these. Are there any other students who are with us who had either a perfect ACT or perfect attendance? And I know Ben, you're back there, so you're Ben Goo from MLK with a perfect ACT score. <laughs> Are there any others in the audience? <laughs> yeah, we wish, right? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move on to our scholarship recipients. Um, today we would like to recognize Rishara Johnson from Nashville School of the Arts for Excellence in the Arts Scholarship. From Maplewood, Malcolm Bepco, the John Harper Harris Scholarship. <laughs> From Hume Fogg, Emily Alcenser, the Charlotte and Elbert Brooks Scholarship. From Hillwood High School, Zara Abdul Amir, the JT Perkins Scholarship. <laughs> are there any other students with us who are scholarship recipients <coughs> that we've missed? <laughs> So now we're going to move on to um, our middle college, our associate's degree students. Um, many people may not know that at middle college high school you can work and while you're also working on your high school degree, you can also earn an associate's degree. We have four who are being recognized tonight. Um, no, actually we have four students who are being recognized for different associate's degree as well as their inter, uh, general education course certificate from middle college, both um, extremely um, prestigious, a lot of work goes into getting those. So we want to start with um, Kevin Goolsby, who has received his Associate of Applied Science and a certificate.
Joy Sanders, who received the Associate of Applied Science. And what's interesting is, if I'm correct, they received their associate's degrees before they received their high school diplomas, so. <laughs> also from Middle College, Geneva Wainick, who received a General Education Corps Certificate. and Rosa Gomez, who received the General Education Corps Certificate. Now, are there any other students who are here tonight for recognitions that we've missed? If so, that concludes our recognitions. Thank you. Thank you so very much to our students and parents. Uh, we wish all of you the best and success in your future endeavors. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will move on to our governance issues. Mr. North. The consent agenda, a approval of minutes, May 8, 2012, regular meeting, B, awarding of bids and contracts, one, Lovaz Institute, two, Amaranth Designs, LLC, three, the Gallup Organization, four, Distingu Distinguished Professionals Educational Institute, DPEI. Five, Alston P. State University. Madam Chair, that completes the consent agenda. Thank you. Move we have, second. We have a move approval and second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Um, number two is recommendation approval of 2012-2013 student code of conduct. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Porter, Dr. Register, and board members. Uh, first, I'd like to thank all the central office staff members and principals that assisted us with the development of the 2012-13 Student Code of Conduct. Uh, I will not read the entire 33-page document uh, to you, but I do want to highlight a little thank bit of information you. for you. Uh, and then if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask at any point in time, and I will stop. On page 11. One of the first things we wanted to do was uh, have a better definition of a suspension as well as the uh, appropriate intervention plan that must be developed. We did do that this school year. Next school year we've actually adopted into the Student Code of Conduct where once a student has been suspended for five consecutive days, it is the responsibility of the school team to develop an intervention plan to develop or to address the behavior difficulties that the student uh, may be having at that point in time and of course involve the parent in that process as much as possible. One of the other things that we wanted to do this school year was to condense the student code of conduct to make it a more user-friendly document and actually to highlight the area. So everything in the uh, copy that you received in red is new information or information that may have been moved or cut from a previous policy. On page 12, we do uh, better define the disciplinary appeals process. This is a change from last school year. In previous years, we have had five levels of disciplinary appeals for expulsions. We have condensed that to three, to three levels of appeal. The first level of appeal is to the disciplinary authority appointed by the board, which is the disciplinary committee. The second level would be to the associate superintendent of student services, or me or my designee. And then the third appeal would be to you as the uh, board of education. Remember, there is a five-day request for appeals window for each level of appeal. And that appeal can be made either in writing or verbally to any uh, school official. <clears throat> On page 14, 
We have actually better defined zero tolerance infractions. If you see the small sentence in the middle, the following offenses are listed in alphabetical order and separated into zero tolerance and non-zero tolerance infractions. We wanted to better define those infractions as for zero tolerance and non-zero tolerance offenses. And then they are also defined on the following pages. Beginning on page 14, we have added much more information regarding bullying, cyberbullying, and harassment to make our code of conduct more in line with national best practices as well as state law. And then all the principals in the principal's handbook will receive the actual step-by-steps of reporting and dealing with bullying and, har and harassment investigations. On page 19, we have basically condensed some of the codes that deal with drug possession under the influence of drugs and drugs paraphernalia. We have found that there have been errors in reporting due to the multitude of drug-related offenses that are non-ZT offenses. So we've condensed those into a single code and then a non-ZT code. So we've actually streamlined the uh, offenses for drug-related offenses or infraction codes for drug-related offenses. On page 24, the anti-bullying and harassment, we have included the term hazing uh, to put our policy more in line with best practices nationally. That is on page 24. And it is also better defined with the definition. And the last substantial change is on page 20, 26. With the internet and email use policy, we will send out separate uh, copies of the bullying policy as well as the internet and email use policy for parents. One thing that we are doing this year is we're doing the opt out which means a parent must send in the opt-out form in order for their child not to be able to use instructional technology and have internet access um, at school. And that pretty much defines all major changes to this year's code of conduct. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions for Mr. Majors? Yes, Ms. Shepard. Thank you for including the um, large body of information regarding cyberbullying and harassment, because I know that has been an issue um, at for some parents across this district, especially this uh, last year, with the availability of social media at, at much younger ages for our students. So I really do appreciate your effort toward that. And You're welcome. Any other comments? With, Mr. Nower. Uh, will this be distributed first day of school? How do it is our intent at home? How's the? It is our intent to actually have it to print within the next two weeks so that all copies will be in the schools on the first day. Also, if you look in, on page one, there's a parent information page. So it's our, bit, our intent to have it go home on the first day and all these forms will be returned. One thing we are doing differently is this is going to go in the code of conduct on perforated paper to sort of signify this needs to be torn out and returned. So we're hoping to have a better return rate on these forms this year, but hopefully go out the first day of school. And this will be available on, on the website, correct? Yes, we will have it available online. And actually, in the Code of Conduct, we reference the policy and how to access, access the full policies. For any policy that we did provide a condensed definition. Okay. And any changes that are made in here, uh, if parents have more detailed questions, they can contact the customer service line? Yes, they can contact customer service. And also, they can always speak to their school principal. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. All right. You're welcome. Dr. Rich, did you have any comments? Well, we, uh, I want to thank Tony and uh, the team of people, the associate superintendents and principals and other people who have worked to develop this code of conduct. We think it's a very sound uh, approach to student discipline in our district and behavior policy. So we certainly recommend approval. I move approval of the 2012, the proposed 2012-2013 student code of conduct. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes and then carry and the motion passes. Thank you so very much. Uh, number three, we have our charter school application recommendation, Mr. Coverstone. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Register. In uh, 2010, this district embarked on a collaborative venture between districts and charter schools that was recognized by the Gates Foundation as one of the first nine in the country to really break the mold on old school competition 
and to move to a generation of new school collaboration between district schools and charter schools. The basis of that collaboration is the promotion of high-performing schools for all students in the district regardless of the type of governance that those schools are about. And so with that endeavor, Nashville is now in the vanguard of this new form of collaboration nationwide. And I just want to begin tonight by reminding us in terms of the purposes for which we're gathered here, what the commitments are that we made in that document and that everyone in this room who operates a charter school and everyone across the city who's contributing to this effort tonight also agrees to. Recognizing that high-performing high schools prepare all students for college and career by providing every student highly effective instruction in every classroom every year, a safe learning environment, and a focus on the whole child that supports student achievement and engagement, and recognizing that public charter schools are public schools sharing deeply in the, and directly in this mission, and whereas high-performing schools are not identified by any specific governance structure, and whereas we desire every public school in Nashville to be a high-performing school, collaboratively undertaking to build a system of high-performing public schools throughout the county, we, the undersigned, pledge to rely on, cultivate, develop, and support highly effective school leaders and teaching professionals, to disseminate and implement at scale schools that are student-centered, pursuing innovation, and actively sharing demonstrated best practices, to empower parents by offering meaningful choices for students and developing creative ways to engage families in the design and success of their school, to collaborate as partners in the citywide effort to provide an excellent education for all students and, as partners, work to share best practices between classrooms, schools, and leaders. And the commitments that follow are commitments in that vein. And so, we begin where we begin every time we ask ourselves what it is we're doing and what our purpose is, and that is the measure and purpose of our charter school strategy is no different than the measure and purpose of every strategy that we have in this district. Every contract decision that we make, every employment decision that we make emanates from our commitment jointly as a, as a collaborative body but also as a city to pursue this vision. And that is, the Metropolitan Nashville Public Schools will provide every student with the foundation of knowledge, skills, and character necessary to excel in higher education, work, and life. And we embrace and value a diverse student population and community. Different perspectives and backgrounds form the cornerstone of our strong public education system. That is our vision, and that is what we stand before you grounded in this evening. Uh, we hope you will accept humbly the recommendations from this committee uh, and you will acknowledge that they are emanating from and in line with this vision uh, tonight. I would like to talk just briefly as well about the context in terms of development of the charter school sector. Uh, we have pursued, uh, I think, intelligent growth, smart growth, uh, but growth that is manageable and which adheres to the sole standard that this Board of Education has to adhere to in evaluating charter school applications, and that is whether your decisions are in the best interest of students, the district, and the community. And that is your judgment to make, and I appreciate you shouldering that uh, significant responsibility. I would remind everyone that the uh, adjustments to the charter school law just in uh, 2011 opened the number of charter schools even a little bit uh, beyond what the, the statewide cap would allow and allowed us to have up to 20 charter schools in Nashville. Uh, subsequent to that, of course, the cap has been removed uh, and we have continued to grow schools, although our total number of schools at present is 11, with two more approved for opening next fall, uh, plus, the, plus the schools uh, that we will uh, recommend for approval tonight. Uh, we believe we are pursuing a managed and balanced approach that acknowledges the challenges that come with opening schools and that acknowledge both the costs and benefits of collaboration. While 100 percent of the funds flow through as they should to the charter schools that operate, collaboration and the beginnings of a new school process require significant investments on the part of the school district and we believe that we make those investments in line with the mission that we've outlined uh, but we make those investments for the long-term gain of the students who are served in those schools. Uh, the results of our charter school sector have, uh, are, are new, are relatively young. Uh, the only significant study to compare charter school results in Tennessee schools modeled on a national study uh, showed that 
about 20% of Tennessee's charter schools perform statistically better uh, than their uh, non-charter school counterparts in the district, but in Nashville it was 40%. Now I admitted it was a low number of schools because we only have five schools at this point that had data sufficient to participate in the study. But we are anticipating that we will continue to see gains in our charter school sector. It is, after all, advancement of the mission of excellence and diversity that leads us to approve the schools that we approve and it is those gains that we think will continue to be exciting in the years ahead. Uh, I noticed, and you'll correct me if there are others, that a couple of our new uh, charter school leaders are in attendance tonight. I'd like to recognize them. Uh, Ravi Gupta, I saw him come in right here from Nashville Prep, and I saw Linda Lentz in the back from Liberty Collegiate. Are there any other uh, charter school operators who are here tonight? Would you please stand so we can see you? Charter school leaders, okay, and and KIPP Academy is represent. I'm sure there are representatives of many of the schools, and I, and I don't mean to, your, your contribution in particular is great, but uh, I wanted to at least acknowledge the new leaders who had come into the room tonight. I think they're doing great work, and I think they'll continue to do great work, and I appreciate their being here and being interested in the mission and vision of the district. Um, the process by which we approve charter schools is a maturing process, but I believe it has matured significantly this year. Uh, I will remind you that the process has been supported by a very large contribution of both in-kind and direct support from the National Association of Charter School Authorizers who selected Nashville as a demonstration site for rolling out best practices as it relates to review of applications, the process of determining which applicants will be awarded schools and which ones will be recommended for denial. And that process has resulted in a tremendous amount of support for our district and for the reviewers who were part of this process this year. Just to give you a glimpse into what the reviewers have done, and allow me to place their names up here, on a strictly volunteer basis and in addition to the work that they do in their day-to-day -day lives, whether it be at the district or in community positions um, uh, of significant expertise related to the evaluation of the applications in the areas we've asked them to evaluate, uh, or, or whether it is uh, just spare time over the weekend, even up to and including uh, the holiday weekend just passed. Uh, National Association of Charter School Authorizers has provided for these people as well as for other charter school operators across the state and for uh, members of the state's Achievement School District as well as the State Office of Charter Schools, uh, access to training uh, totaling 10 hours each for each of these people, to, all at once, but 10 hours for each of these people to participate in. And in addition, Carol Swan in our office has provided one to two hours of training for individual members as well as a series of ongoing meetings to provide support. I know that Dr. Brannon has given copious amounts of time to evaluating and being part of the Charter School Committee, and she has done that for a number of years. Uh, and I want to make sure that I particularly thank her, as well as Carol, uh, as well as Anna Lee, who has contributed as an intern in our office. And without every shred of this help and assistance, we couldn't possibly get this done. And we certainly couldn't undertake the level of review and the implementation of national best practices in review that we've been able to do uh, without the assistance of every single one of these people, and we appreciate them uh, very much. I should let you know, just by way of a plug, that when the National Association of Charter School Authorizers out is, is responsible for a uh, contract relationship to review charter school applications, which they do with Louisiana and a number of other authorizers across the country. Uh, they pay approximately $7,500 for team leads, as well as $750 per application reviewed on average. Uh, so this represents an incredible amount of dedication and effort and, and work on the part of uh, people who've behaved very well professionally, have taken this job very seriously, and have given us, I think, very good results. Uh, uh, we recently had a law change in Tennessee which will allow us to charge up to $500 for application fees. In this year's cycle, that would give us $5,000, uh, 50, uh, $5, basically, uh, to cover those same expenses. And while we, we are certainly appreciative of that and think that that will help somewhat, uh, it's not going to go to the level of dedication and commitment that you get from these people. And I want to make sure that I appreciate that and that you understand how much they contribute as well, you and everyone who's watching across the city. All of the work that we do is grounded in 
uh, all of the work and the decisions that we've made this, this year are grounded in six priorities that we articulated in a call for proposals last, that, that was released last fall. Uh, this is something that we've discussed with the board. Uh, we have asked for board input in terms of assessing and determining how these priorities are advanced, and I think we've held true uh, to honoring these priorities in terms of the judgments that have been made by the charter school review teams and, their, uh, and, and in determining whether or not the applications are aligned with one or more of these proceed, uh, one or more of these priorities. It is, after all, these priorities that help us to articulate where we're going to distribute scarce public resources. It is uh, simply old school to suggest that any charter school that crosses a threshold might be opened. It is instead the new school form of collaboration and joint effort to try to pool our resources to advance our goals to the maximum amount possible. Uh, that leads us to articulate these priorities. This is the uh, ongoing trend across the country for those districts that are identified as uh, portfolio or collaborative districts. Those districts are uh, districts that aim to collaborate and cooperate for the purpose of establishing high quality schools regardless of type. You have to articulate your priorities in order to do that. And we have done that and we believe that our recommendations honor those tonight. Those are achievement gap closures, schools that demonstrate innovations for English learners, innovations for students with disabilities, elementary capacity in North Nashville, a commitment to diversity, and innovative or proven approaches to working with limited resources. The review process, as I mentioned, was extensive. It began with an individual review by each member of each team of the proposals that were in front of them. Each team uh, was able to focus on about three applications, a significant advance this year for going in depth and uh, analyzing the applications more thoroughly than we've been able to do in the past. The result of the first round of individual assessments was a team collaboration to produce a first round consensus. Uh, we have a 13 category state application which is scored on a does not meet, partially meets, meets and exceeds basis. Those schools that were largely in the partially meets, meets and exceeds range were invited for an interview. Those schools which were not significantly in that range were not invited for an interview and were notified uh, that we had to uh, not advance them this, at this time and they will uh, be acted on today and uh, they will receive a full report of the reasons for that decision uh, pending your action first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, Following the interview, the teams met again to form a consensus recommendation of the teams. In order to be recommended for approval to you, we have a clear threshold that the application must be rated by the committee to meet or exceed in all categories. If it is deficient, partially meets in any category, we will be recommending denial tonight. And that recommendation, of course, is subject to further resubmission and appeal according to the state law. Resubmissions to us must be received by June 13th, 2012, uh, which will trigger the, uh, trigger the subsequent review and of course we'll be back together on uh, June, June 26th should there be any resubmissions that we need to evaluate. The committee's process is extensive. And while I will represent it the best I can, please recall that it is their judgments and their decisions and their efforts that have gone into this process. And while I will be able to uh, represent them to the extent that, that, that it's possible, I perhaps m might not be able, and it might not be true to them, to parse it down to the littlest of details tonight. If you have not received in the full report or in the answers that I give tonight, sufficient evidence to justify recommending the school, then you should err on the side of denial because resubmission exists to clarify those kinds of questions and those kinds of decisions. In fact, resubmission does not exist for the purpose of completely rewriting or substantially redirecting an application. Instead, resubmission, because it is a short period, is for clarifying those details which will go into a contract which will govern the relationship between the school and uh, this board. And as such, you know, should be limited to those things that can be adapted during that, that, that particular amount of time. And I think we have a couple in, those cat in that category tonight, um, but we'll leave it to you to, to understand and discuss as we go forward. All right, um, 
If there are no questions at this point, we'll proceed with recommendations. Madam Chair, we, our tradition has been to take them one at a time. Uh, you each have uh, copies of the full report of the committee, so I will not read. And Tony got applause for that, right? I will not read all of the pages of that. Uh, instead, I, thank you, thank you. I, instead, I will try, I think if, if, I think if you'd asked me to lead the pledge tonight, I might have done it like Tony did a few weeks ago also. I will instead try to hit some highlights, uh, take your questions, and uh, you know, deliver our recommendation, let you deliberate and, and act on these schools one at a time. We'll take them in this order. Any further questions at this point? Should we move ahead? All right, the first application recommended for denial is Antioch Prep. Antioch Prep is a K through five proposal which would operate to the capacity of 360 students. 120 are proposed for year one, year one being the fall of 2013, and those would be distributed from kindergarten to first grade. Uh, the location cited for the school is Greater Antioch, although as you see in the report, the location is nonspecific. Reasons for denial include uh, the committee's conclusion that overall evidence of capacity does not meet the standard for approval because of substantial areas in the state application documents and scoring rubric simply unaddressed or poorly addressed. The guidelines issued by the state were not followed and the review team was forced to search to find information. There was no focus on measurable student achievement outcomes or uh, quantitative or qualitative. The review team could find no alignment with Tennessee standards, Common Core standards, nor did there seem to be a firm understand, uh, understanding of the accountability system under Tennessee law. Very few details regarding intervention, outreach strategies, especially for students with disabilities, English language learners, and other at-risk populations. Budget was weak in detail and lacking start a startup component, cash flow, and specific budget assumptions associated with teacher salaries and professional development. The facility was not described, as I had alluded to. No school leader identified student discipline policies vague and lacking in due process safeguards for students with disabilities. And taken as a whole, the evaluation team did not believe the applicant was ready to open and run a highly successful school as an organization. Therefore, we recommend denial of Antioch Prep's application. Move we deny the application of Antioch Prep. Second. We have a motion and second. Um, any discussion? No discussion. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Let's move on to the next one. Application number two is from Excel Academy. This is an adult school aged 18 and above proposed to serve 550 students at capacity with 225 being proposed in year one. It is modeled in the Goodwill Industries model operating in Indianapolis. Uh, and the location was uh, asserted to be Antioch or North Nashville, though again, uh, specific details are lacking. Uh, the committee recommends denial of this application because of its inability to align with district needs or priorities its lack of a proposed curriculum plan, limited or no strategies for English learners and students with disabilities, student discipline plans which are non-existent, no basis to assume that the seats will be filled, there is no recruiting plan articulated, and that is a large number of seats that the budget is based on, no professional development plan, a staffing plan and budgetary assumptions which are not sufficient to justify confidence in operations, and a funding request related to the allocation of funds to adult students that is not aligned with the state funding process or formulas and we can't endorse or sign a contract for a proposal that in that uh, advances uh, that kind of funding formula given the misalignment and therefore the committee recommends denial. Move we deny the charter school application of Excel Academy. Second. We have a motion and second. Questions in a discussion? All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. The third application is uh, for Fusion Connection. Fusion Connection proposes a 9 through 12 school uh, with a blended learning model. 
capacity for this school is proposed at 250 students with 200 students proposed to enter grades 9 through 11 in year 1. No location is specified. The committee recommends uh, denial of this application because the curriculum design <coughs> is incomplete. Uh, plans for students with disabilities and English learners are non-existent. No waivers have been requested, even though even making the class size adjustments that blended learning would require would require waivers to be uh, requested of the state of the state board of state board rules and also of district policies. Uh, doesn't mean that can't be happen can't happen, but it generally indicates a sign of incomplete adherence to an attention to detail on the part of an applicant when those kinds of waivers are not included. Uh, the understanding of the relationship between MMPS and state board policies and requirements under the law and the flexibility that is accorded charter schools still requires charter schools to uh, adhere to the processes by which those flexibilities are granted uh, and this application does not. Board experience is limited and their role description is incomplete. Uh, there's no basis for, un for assuming that the uh, operation of the board would be institutionally strong. Budgetary detail is incomplete. Uh, and relies heavily on a partnership for which there is no formal documentation, no formal commitments or agreements that could be enforced. Uh, there is no proposed agreement between Fusion Inc. and their contracting education management organization, <coughs> which appears to be a Pearson organization. Um, school operations and plans for the blended model are not sufficient to guide implementation, so this remains a good idea without actual legs or a proposal that we could contract with for delivery of services and it's about contracting that we're engaged in today. It assumes a line of credit not supported with documentation and therefore the committee recommends denial. Do we have a motion? Move that we deny the charter school application for fusion connection of Nashville. Second. We have a motion and second and a discussion. No discussion. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. The next application is Gifted Achievers. Gifted Achievers proposes a K through six school located in North Nashville with a capacity of 224 students proposing to serve 112 in grades kindergarten through second grade for year one. The committee uh, has uh, cited the following as reasons for its recommendation of denial. Lack of specific and detailed curriculum plans that align with Tennessee State Standards and Common Core Standards. No plan for English learners. No mention of middle and high school learners at all, although the school is requesting approval of a K-12 school eventually. Staffing plans are inadequate. Pro professional development plans are not adequately developed and aligned to the school's mission. Detailed intervention and outreach plan reach plans for special needs populations are undeveloped and inadequate. Discipline plans do not include due process and do not protect student rights. The budget is lacking in specificity in most sections and, not pres and no specificity presented on the appropriate form that is required by the state. Budget lacks detail and was very difficult to analyze but does not appear uh, to balance uh, due to a lack of specific numbers. In short, there is too much uncertainty about this application to recommend its approval and the committee recommends denial. Move, we deny the charter school application of gifted achievers. Second. We have a motion and a second and a discussion. No discussion, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. The next application is Great Hearts Academy. Great Hearts proposes to operate a K through 12 school with a 917 student capacity, 657 of whom would be enrolled in K through nine in year one. Uh, the proposal also suggests that there be a need for five schools as part of this, uh, as part of this award. Uh, the location is variously described and variously discussed but not specified. Uh, the, the applicant are, uh, says that the, the selection of the location would be subject to uh, the demand of the community. 
but without settling on a location, there is no way to evaluate facility plans or the student population that will be served. And because the applicants will not commit to a timeline for deciding or the criteria on which those decisions will be based, this application cannot be reviewed based on understanding of location and understanding of the population to be served. Secondly, there, was no base, there is no basis in our procedures or in our law for awarding five charters at once, and they've made it clear that their financial calculations could not cover just one. We are not in a position at this point to guarantee other schools without first observing and noting the results from the first, and benchmarks for selecting and approving subsequent schools are not present in the application. Third, the school plan does not uh, address the district, does not satisfy the district identified priorities and they promote a neighborhood schools approach to diversity that is not aligned with the district mission or vision as presented at the beginning. Otherwise, this is a school with a track record of success in academics, but is not aligned with our mission and vision as articulated in our call for proposals and therefore the committee recommends denial. Move we denial the charter school application. Uh, of great hearts. Second. We have a motion and second and a discussion. Hearing no discussion. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. The next school is Genesis Transitions. This is a school that proposes to uh, establish programming for students ages 17 to 22 years old with disabilities to assist in life transitions and to, and to satisfy academic as well as job training and job placement needs uh, during these critical years. Uh, their location is, uh, is uh, articulated as a metro center location. Reasons for this decision include an over-reliance on other programs without sufficient detail to begin operations. Specifically, this is a, uh, the sponsor of this application does provide services to the district and does so quite well. However, the specific application addresses a different kind of, a different kind and different set of uh, provided services and the application and the uh, interview did not sufficiently provide support for those different type of services that uh, we would hope to be contracting with and in entering into this agreement. Job training experiences are limited. Uh, primarily the work is brought in. Uh, we are certainly in this effort looking for more outplacement responsibilities and opportunities for students to go beyond the walls of the classroom environment, beyond the walls of our institutions and instead find their way into the world of work uh, and seeking uh, organizations that will expand those partnerships greatly. Uh, at this point, the application does not provide evidence of that. Uh, we need clear and measurable outcomes in order to performance manage. And this is a challenge in a school that provides an alternative kind of service, and we need to begin that begin that conversation through clearly articulated performance measurement outcomes and benchmarks on the part of the applicant so that we know what it is that they seek to be held accountable for so that we can determine as contractors if those are sufficient goals for us to try to advance and for us to allocate public resources toward. Uh, we found insufficient evidence of liability management and the building of outplacement opportunities aforementioned. The challenge with this school is to demonstrate ways to offer the kinds of transitional programs that students need in a financially viable and sustainable way and this application is not there yet. Assumed, they, they have assumed competitive, uh, the competitive startup grant for charter schools, for instance, in their funding, uh, and there remain some questions concerning the funding allocation assumptions that are, that are present in the budget that need to be linked to the services provided. And for these reasons, the committee recommends denial. Move that we deny the charter school application for uh, Genesis Transitions. Second. We have a motion and second and a discussion. No discussion. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Next application is for Purpose Preparatory Academy. Purpose Preparatory proposes to serve a K through four population. 360 students in capacity with 120 students in kindergarten in year one. Uh, location uh, specified in East Nashville at the YMCA. 
uh, program, the, the, the committee's evaluation and assessment of this application, uh, in short, believes that the program has yet to come fully to life. Many pieces are in place and significant contributions are also present at this time. However, the implementation and design of an organization capable of responding to contingency planning requirements and other demands of opening a school are not quite at the place where they've given the committee confidence to recommend uh, approval. There are plenty of operational details on paper, no shortage of that, but much more to be done in developing confidence in the contingency planning and intellectual humility in favor of collaboration on part of the organization and, and the leadership, which is believed to be quite competent. Transportation planning and funding is uncertain and details remain to be resolved prior to any potential contracting with this school. Mo the modular facility planning that is uh, referenced in the plan is not supported by documentation from the site. Uh, no uh, specific guarantees make, make it plain that the location will be, um, will be honored and could be followed through in the way that the budget projects. Uh, there is limited educational experience among this organization and uh, there could be more, there needs to be more in order to address the ex educational plans that are in place on paper but need to be implemented. And finally, limited articulation of innovations or tools for moving the needle on student achievement uh, which would help to associate further with district priorities. So therefore the committee recommends denial of this application. Move that we deny the charter school application of Purpose Preparatory Academy. Second. We have a motion and second in the discussion. No discussion. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes carried and the motion passes. All right, we have uh, three applications that remain uh, which are recommended for your approval tonight. Uh, the first one is Intrepid Preparatory. Uh, Intrepid Preparatory proposes a 5 through 12 serving 750 students at capacity. 120 of those students will be served in grade 5 in year 1 and the location for this school is the Antioch area. Uh, the reasons for this decision and the support of this school by the committee are that the application includes an excellent curriculum and instruction plan aligned well to standards and organized around a unique financial literacy component. A clear objective, it, this application provides clear objectives and goals, assessments that are well aligned, and the basis for performance management relationship to be established. This, this applicant shows good attention to detail with regard to special populations. Uh, I already mentioned the innovative financial literacy curriculum. This embraces a community schools model as well to support community vitality beyond the school doors but with the school as a hub for the community uh, which is aligned with the best thinking that we have in the district as well. It has a strong discipline plan with alternatives and an awareness of the due process requirements that are associated with discipline plans in public education. It prioritizes and supports reintegration of students disciplined back into the school <coughs> environment which is a feature that we applaud. It also encourages strong family engagement, has strong plans for communication, home visits, and, and, and the like. It has a business plan that is strong and a, funding, and, and a funding and budget plan that are commensurate with that strength. It has clear board processes, strong organizational capability combined with intellectual humility, and bent on collaboration, which is important to our district as well. Therefore, for these reasons, we recommend approval of Intrepid. Gonna, we have a motion. I'm going to change up just a little bit. Um, I move that we deny the charter school application of Intrepid Preparatory Charter School. Do we have a second? I'll second it for the purpose of discussion. If there's any okay, we discuss. have a motion and right. second, and now we can move into discussion. Right. If I may. Yes, Thank Mr. Noah. Um, we're, we're sort of at a new horizon on, on charter schools, and we've also had charter schools for <laughs> A long enough time to um, have some reference points. Um, by it, in March, uh, uh, Mr. Barbet, Chris Barbet, came to us uh, and pointed out that um, uh, I think what he said was, "Do not tolerate mediocre charter schools. They must be better than average. Uh, it, it, they must be held to a higher standard. And really what he said was, and if they're not, close them. And we're not talking about closing them. We're talking about 
Um, we're talking about whether to approve an application or not. Um, and uh, we got a promotional video, I guess, last week. And he said the same thing. Uh, and uh, and we take that seriously. Uh, it's important that any school we approve is, we know is going to be a great one, and better, than, better than average. And for a long time, we've sort of done it on faith. We review these applications, um, but we're now at the, po at the point, like I said, that, that we have some that have been around long enough to be points of reference for us. KIPP and LEED are um, uh, good charter schools. And they're charter schools that, um, that have a good reputation uh, in the community, uh, and they make a good uh, comparison of what Intrepid might become someday um, as it develops, if it's approved. Um, so um, I spent the weekend, uh, or some of the weekend, I, I enjoyed the holiday, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, reviewing uh, the Department of Education um, uh, report card to see how our charter schools were doing um, to sort of get that reference point uh, to see what we were talking about. Ended up looking at every middle school in the district. And I, if, if you want a copy of it, I, I hand it around, but I'll, I'll tell you what it says if you don't. I've, I've got several copies. Um, it's, um, and here, here's what it shows. This is straight from the, the report card. This is not the PR firm. Um, this is how, how our schools are doing. Um, uh, in, in 2011, for the year 2011, um, KIPP, 24% of their students uh, scored proficient or advanced on math. Reading, it was 43%. Lead, in 2011, 30% of their students scored proficient or advanced uh, in math. And 37% uh, in reading, and actually, LEAD took a small step backwards in 2011 from 2010. Now, if you turn to about the sixth page, something I don't like doing very often, is just list and compare all of our schools. Um, and of the 39 middle schools in math, uh, KIPP is 21st, LEAD is 16th, 15 of the 39 schools are better. And reading, now those are, those are our two best charter schools. In, in reading, KIPP is 22nd out of 39 and LEAD is tied for 26th. Now on the, on the next page, um, I just average the scores, uh, reading and math, and then put them in rank order. And both LEAD and KIPP tie. They have exactly the same score, and they are tied for 19th. They are exactly the median middle school for Metro Nashville Public Schools on that measure. Now, that screams average. Now, which leads us to Intrepid. Now, Int Intrepid Academy's application specifically cites Antioch um, Middle School and Apollo Middle School as schools they I don't know, would do better than, right? Or want to replace or uh, specifically say, in the executive summary, you don't have to read far to get to it. And if you look on that overall, um, 
ahead of both Lead and KIPP are Antioch Middle School and Apollo. They both score better than our two really good charter schools. Now, what about value added, right? I mean, we, we're, value added takes into account the student growth, right? You, we, we take the students how they find, fi you know, how we find them, how they come to us, and, and you measure growth, and that's in a measure of how effective a school is. Now, for 2010-2011, Antioch Middle School um, is our third best middle school behind DuPont Tyler and H.G. Hill on value added score. Apollo is fifth. And again, both of them score better than any of our charter schools. There he is. Nothing in this application that leads me to believe or convinces me that Intrepid would be any better than Kip or Lead. And for last year, that's average. And that's just not good enough. One more thing. The, the application several times in it had, <clears throat> I don't know, typographical errors or it misses a word or the sentence isn't right. It happens in Nashville Classical um, application too. The one that, that was really glaring, and I don't, I don't want to be, I, I don't want to nitpick. I, I know it's a 200 page, um, uh, you know, application. But the one that was really glaring is footnote 113. Footnote 113 on which one? is on, on um, uh, uh, Intrepid. Okay. Is a botched quote in the body of the application. And then the footnote is five question marks. And I, and I wouldn't have noticed it probably, except it's highlighted in yellow in the application. Um, for all those reasons, uh, this application should be denied. Mr. Kendall, did you I have, just, I have a question for Mr. Knorr? Uh, and I understand your, your point about uh, the comparison with LEAD and uh, KIPP, but I think the other point that I think I hear you saying is that Intrepid's uh, plans are to locate and service uh, students from basically Apollo and Antioch, is that correct? That's right, yeah, the, in, middle, in school, that, the middle school's in that area. And, and what you're saying is that the, at the present time, uh, Antioch and Apollo are doing better uh, than most they, middle schools. <clears throat> yeah, I, and I think they are in, in... I mean, based on the data you in, in, Yeah, and based on, based on that data, they are doing better than what we can, sitting here today, reasonably expect from Intrepid based on, based on the data from, um, from those two really good charter schools. So based on that answer, I have a question there for Mr. Sure. Coverstone. Go right ahead. Mr. Coverstone, mm -hmm. in, in evaluation, I know you didn't personally do all the evaluations of this, but I guess one of the consider, strong considerations that we have when we select these charter schools is choice of parents in a specific geographic area to send their kids to a school that is doing better than maybe the schools they're attending. But based on the information that Mr. North has presented, was that considered in terms of, 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 of recommending approval? Because they, they would be drawing primarily, it seemed to me, from these other two middle schools. Yes, choice is considered and the uniqueness of the <coughs> curriculum was highlighted by the committee's results. Um, so yes is the answer to your question, among other things. But okay, I, I guess my question is, the uniqueness of this program, how does it differ from Apollo and 
Anyhow, uh, well, a, a heavy emphasis on the community schools model and a specific focus on this financial literacy curriculum combined to create a, a really a different approach. And so the committee was definitely favorably disposed toward the different approach. You know, I will say with regard to numbers, Mr. North is right. We've got to shoot higher. And I think we are shooting higher. I think the charter schools will continue to be higher in their results under this form of process. But hey, it's not a point worth arguing because uh, we all want better results and we expect better results. Any other discussion? Uh, Mr. Coverstone, I know in the um, SAD, uh, report there's no mention of a particular location. Has that been indicated? Mm -hmm. Intrepid has uh, four contingency plans. The first is the Gold's Gym at 2337 Murfreesboro Pike. The second is the Lakeshore Christian Church at 5434 Bell Forge Lane. The third is the former Publix at 2521 Murfreesboro Pike. And then they have a mo modular plan backup. Okay, and so all, all, well, the three locations that you mentioned are basically right in the area that would serve Antioch and Apollo. That's correct. Okay. Good. Yes, Dr. Gentry. So the thing I can't get out of my mind is the conversation we had the last time we had to review charter schools. And one of the things that even some members around this table kept throwing out were evaluation and decisions being made on one charter school's application based on decisions we made about other charter school's applications. And I think that even in our retreat, we tried to be very clear that we are evaluating charter schools against a particular rubric, not comparing them to other schools. So I just want to be very careful proceeding, not that the data is wrong, but this is also, re these are results of something. Uh, we're talking about different models, uh, a different approach, different, you know, uh, strategies, a different school, and, and, and not, we need something to make better predictions and hopefully get better at the charter schools that we're selecting so that we can be better at predicting the success of the schools and the success of our students who choose to attend these schools. I just don't know that a five minute review of this data is sufficient enough to make it input into a decision here given the labor and the review process that has already gone into it. I think if we want to be able to use this kind of data and, and take the value that it does provide, we need to figure out how we factor it in to the evaluation process on the front end. Um, it, it can't be the, the filter or the catch-all on the back end. I, I, I don't, I don't, and I don't know how to do that, but I think it's just, we just need to be very careful um, how, we, how we use that data in comparing schools, because that's what we're doing now. When we made it a clear point, when we were, I think it was in the Drexel situation, and evaluating that application and making decisions on it, based on decisions we've made on another school's application. So I just want to throw that out there to think about as we ponder what we're going to do about each other. And look, can I add just yes. one thing also? Um, while Mr. North makes very valid points on the data, I would also say that, um, and the reason I asked where these schools were located, because I don't, as a, as a parent in these schools, I feel pretty sure that if your children are doing well, in either Antioch or Apollo that you wouldn't necessarily pull them out to go to a charter school. You, you know what I'm, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I, I think there are s several other middle schools in that area that are doing, you know, a little bit worse that uh, this could be an attraction, this school could be an attraction. So I just want to be clear, the reason I asked that was because I needed to understand where the locations were because it's very, um, it's very, um, I don't know, it's interesting to me that uh, it's, it's uh, the locations that they've chosen. But because, again, that some of the other schools may not be doing as well, it's a possibility that the parents may look at this and say, you know, 
I don't think that if you're doing well in a school that you're going to say, let's, let's change. That's my point. Which may be closer to Mr. Kendall's point yeah, also. Mr. Kendall. Yeah, I, I just have one more question. You, you mentioned when you initially that if you have doubt or whatever, you may want to err on one side because they can bring it back. In this situation, if the question is, I mean, I think we all support charter schools, but we support them on the basis that they provide a different kind of choice, not just a charter school for the sake of having a, another school in the area. I don't support that and never will. Uh, but if they brought it back, or we ask them to bring it back, I mean, not ask them, obviously bring it back by June the 13th, and that issue were addressed, what is it that you would be providing over and above what these other schools are providing? And maybe they've already done that, and I just don't see it. Uh, would that come back to us? Well, I, I think the, that part of it, the what it, you know, getting it on the front end is the question. And I think from the standpoint of getting it on the front end, that's what the committee has been charged with doing at a very deep level, trying to make that prediction. The only way to really lock that in is with performance management contracting to set the expectations that uh, the school will have to adhere to. And, and that is exactly the basis for our contracts that we will execute going forward. Um, <clears throat> If you were to send this out and ask them to come back based on that, the only thing they could do would be to set performance benchmarks that are in line with meeting the goals that you would have as a board. Or strike Apollo and any other Well, they could do that, but that may be too little too late, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, per yes, perhaps there could be adjustments made to the recruiting plan. Perhaps there could be adjustments made in terms of identifying which students at a school are targeted, et cetera. Um, but I would think that the bottom line for all of us would be the targets that they set. And um, this, is, this is simply the last piece of the puzzle for us and a piece which, as we've discussed, will be part of the performance contracts that we're establishing this time, um, which will give us the contractual basis for uh, closing schools that don't meet, meet those benchmarks. Um, and I think, as you know, uh, the contractual basis may not overcome the political challenges of, of doing that, which is always hard, uh, but it certainly gives us a stronger basis to stand on and one that is more objective and that begins to address how do we continue to move the bar up. But quite frankly, and, and this is my last comment. That's all right. You, um, you quite you frankly, here, regardless of whether you target a particular school or not, it's up to the parents to make the decision on where Absolutely. they send their children. So even if you remove Antioch and Apollo from the, the uh, plan, if I'm a parent and I hear about the school, or if I'm a grandparent and I hear about the school and I want my child to go there, then it's my choice. So regardless of you know, resubmitting um, based on a particular school target may or may not be the answer in this case. That's, that's it, thank you. Any more discussion? Yes, Dr. I have a question Hager. for Mr. North. Sure, so, so given the performance contracts, which is a new piece, right, to, to what we're doing here with the charter schools, is that the answer to this? Because even though this one <coughs> application you know, stepped on in the wrong spot with referencing schools that were actually performing better than other charter schools. Do we leverage the performance contract and this data to say, you're coming in, one of the fundamental expectations of a charter school is that you do what, we're, what we propose as our responsibility to our students and you deliver that better. You deliver it more efficiently. You deliver it more effectively. You deliver it more consistently, right? That's the charter school mantra, the, the drum that's being beat. Is the performance contract then the answer or part of the answer to avoiding having schools or, or, or schools not understanding what we expect from a performance perspective? Right, Un, uh, under, having underperforming charter schools that we can't, right. that we have trouble doing anything about. Hey, whatever charter schools we approve should have those performance contracts within the case. with with right i mean um uh, i mean that's uh, whether that cures it and uh, um 
it is another question, but they all should they all should have have that I think, and I think we're working on that. I think that's and and working together with that with uh, working together with uh, charter operators to to develop that. And could I could I make an asterisk sure. on that? Mm -hmm. sure. The worst thing that could happen out of this discussion, th this discussion is about raising outcomes for all students, which is the right. discussion That's we right. should have. The worst thing that could happen is if we all go back to our collective corners and try to hunker down and figure out the way to constrain the numbers and compile the numbers to show that after all, turns out Antioch Middle and Apollo were not as strong. Um, I think that would be wasted effort. Mm -hmm. It is that recognition that is enshrined in the District Charter Collaboration Compact. It is the basis for the establishment of a joint set of criteria that are benchmarked that we've been working on, both with the support of the National Association of Charter School Authorizers and the Gates Foundation under the compact, so as to begin to answer this question. How can we collaboratively say these are things that we agree we should see for our students, and then let's let the chips fall where they may. That work has taken time, but it is work that is only possible with collaboration, as you mentioned, and would not be possible through division. And, 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 and Mr. Barbick's point is that charter schools are held to a higher standard and that just a little bit better um, or the same uh, is not good enough. I mean, that, that's certainly his, um, his, the point he made to us and the point he makes in, in his video. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Any other discussion or questions for Mr. Coverstone? Okay, we've had a call for the question. All in favor of the motion to Mr. Uh, North's motion to deny, please let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Motion, aye. motion <laughs> carried. So we will entertain um, then a motion. Do we have a motion to approve? I move that we approve um, the application for Intrepid. Okay, second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. We have um, one opposition. Motion carries. Next application. Next application is KIPP Academy. This proposal is for a middle school five through eight with a capacity of 350 students, 96 in fifth grade in year one. The ultimate goal for this configuration would be for KIPP to have two middle schools, one located in East Nashville, one in the Whites Creek Cluster feeding its single high school which was approved last year but which they will defer to open another year uh, this fall. As far as location is concerned, uh, they will all be moved out and located in, in the Ewing Park building this year during renovations for the Highland Heights facility and proposed moving the old the, the existing five through eight and the high school back to the Highland Heights facility and leaving the one middle school behind uh, in, in the North Nashville area. So that's the proposal. Um, KIPP Academy's application demonstrates excellent curriculum and instruction plans aligned to standards, clear objectives and goals and, and assessments that are, are well aligned, good plans for special populations, innovative finance, uh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong one, aren't I? Apologize, start over. KIPP exemplary organization, uh, which has also made significant efforts to drive organizational and academic excellence in their existing schools in the last year and a half. Uh, positive school culture with strong efforts uh, that are recognized in social emotional engagement. Uh, work, their work with special populations is improving. Their plans are uh, moving toward exemplary. Uh, they have a record of student growth, which was before discussed. Uh, they have a separate, uh, there's a, uh, I'm sorry, um, we had a separate review of capacity to expand this time for schools that existed already, uh, utilizing uh, NAXA standards for schools that are anticipating replication, specifically to determine whether they have the organizational financial capacity to sustain that 
expansion so that they wouldn't be an organization that was depleted in terms of leadership or resources as a result. And KIPP's organizational uh, framework passes with flying colors. Uh, they have a leadership pipeline which is dependent upon the fellowship programs that the KIPP organization uh, sponsors and, and uh, shepherds and they do not open until they have a leader from one of those fellowships and therefore there is an independent check on making sure that they do not overextend their leadership capacity. And for all of these these reasons, the committee recommended KIPP's approval. I move that we approve the application for KIPP. And do we have a second? A second. Any discussion? I have something. Okay, Mr. Noah. Um, now, we know KIPP and we like KIPP. Uh, and KIPP is a good charter school. Um, uh, but it had a bad year, 2010, 2011. Uh, and the test scores show it. Uh, it. It did not perform up to standards uh, for a middle school in Metro Nashville public schools. In addition to you know, the, the data we had at, on, um, on the report card, there's a pretty good section of value added that compares grade and subject matter so that it's a pretty good apples to apples comparison uh, for specific grade levels for math and for reading and for social studies and for science. Um, for 2010-2011, um, KIPP's fifth grade, re fifth grade math was below MNPS average, below average. Seventh, gr uh, seventh grade math was below average. Seventh grade social studies was below average. Seventh grade science was below average. Eighth grade reading was below average. Eighth grade social studies was negative 10.2. Now that sounds bad, and it's worse than that. Um, there, that was the worst social studies value added score in all of Metro Nashville public schools for eighth grade. And their science score is worse than that for 2010-2011. It's negative 10.6, also the worst. Now, you know, I, that's probably just a blip. That's probably a year that they just did poorly. And I'm sure that the, te the school year that just ended, you know, is going to show some improvement. But as we stand now, with, with that record in front of us, uh, and the directive from the state not to approve charter schools that are just average, I th this social studies and science score is not average. It's not mediocre. It's awful. It's awful. And you know, like, like I said, I'm sure that I'm sure they bounce back this year, uh, and I'm sure they're going to do better. But with the results they got, with the report card that we have in front of us, we can't approve a charter application with those results out there. Just can't do it. I guess we can, but I submit that we shouldn't. Those are my comments. Another question. Mr. Kendall. And this is to Mr. Coverstone. In, in the evaluation process, based on what uh, Mr. North has, has talked about, uh, and I know that we have discussed the closing of some schools because they have these kind of uh, failing grades and in this case we're talking about expanding actually I guess what we're talking about expanding KIPP 
I mean, expanding well, the program. Well, in fairness, this is not I'm just asking. the same. No, I'm asking, it's not is, this, is this expanding the program? Right, this is adding, to, to yes, adding absolutely. additional. Absolutely. Uh, when you say it's not the same, I, I'm not talking about AYP. I'm talking about looking at results, whatever they are, value added, right. AYP. Uh, I know they're not in the bottom five of the innovation zone, et cetera. But are those considerations take it to, uh, do the, does the committee take that in consideration? Because we're talking about adding to a school that has results in 2010 and 11 that aren't, aren't very satisfactory. Uh, you know. Well, the answer is yes, and the supplemental um, capacity application that is designed for schools that are adding schools does assess the, the record in its entirety. So yes, the committee does take that into account. And there is a marked difference in the closure threshold and what Mr. North has described here. I think that's, he might not agree, but I th think he would. Well, I, I'm not speaking of what the law is relative to 5% closure, that kind of thing. I'm talking about looking at how the school is performing. Right, yes. and the answer what, is yes, irrespective absolutely. Of what they the law take that is. into account. That's rolled into their recommendations, yes. Any other discussion or questions that you might have for? You have a question, Mr. Kennedy? No. Anyone else? Okay. And the motion was to deny. All in favor? No. The motion was that to never grant. was a motion. Yeah. Anna, oh, was going Ms. back Shepherd to yours. I'm sorry. Ms. Shepard made the I'm motion sorry. to grant the charter. Thank you. The motion is to grant the charter. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. 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 Uh, let's make sure that we've, we've got everybody. We have, we have had a hand one up. said aye. Will you please raise your hand for, for the ayes? We have one. And those opposed, please raise your hands. And I'm actually going to abstain from this one okay. because I want to do more digging. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five no's and one abstention. Okay. okay. So the motion is to deny the approval of KIPP moving forward. Thank you. Okay, Mr. All right, last Armstrong. one is uh, Nashville Classical. This school is a K through eight, capacity 450 students, 108 in kindergarten in year one. Uh, preliminary location in the incubator facility in East Nashville, uh, but targets North Nashville and addresses the North Nashville Elementary School uh, priority. Uh, does so with a classical curriculum. Classical curriculum and great book strategy, which is located in North Nashville and addresses the specific priority for greater high quality elementary capacity in that part of town. Uh, is at the core of this proposal. Uh, they demonstrate strong differentiation, evident in plans for all levels of students and special populations as well. Uh, this is an application that has grown and has uh, learned from a year and a half's worth, at least, of preparation uh, and is showing signs of a sophisticated approach to what it takes to run a school. Uh, team teaching, two, two teachers in every classroom, a strong literary focus, a research-based model curriculum that's very thorough and offers a seamless transition from elementary to middle school, something that is not available widely in the district by a K-8 through eight model. Uh, also innovative discipline approaches, solid alternative instructions aligned with required laws, uh, transportation plan that is effective, and food service plans that are in place. So for these reasons, the committee's recommendation is approval of Nashville Classical. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve the charter school application of Nashville Classical Charter School. Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Question. Yes, Mr. Kendo. In the past, many of the charter schools we approved uh, were based upon the law before change, opening it up to any, any student in the community, uh, and was based primarily on disadvantaged youth. Uh, for that reason, 
we have several of our charter schools, I assume for that reason, uh, that are predominantly African American, predominantly poor, in terms of free and reduced lunch, if you want to use that definition. In this case, by being located in North Nashville, which I think historically, since I've been on this Board of Education, has been a very difficult part of the city to diversify in terms of race and socioeconomics. What in this plan does this charter school propose in terms of recruitment, in terms of transportation, and those kind of features to at least maximize the potential to have a diverse population in, in this school? Well, I think there are a couple things, but um, primarily it is the location combined with the classical curriculum, which has proven very popular across the city and which we believe will attract people from outside of that region as well. It is an example of attempting to strategically locate and to draw a wider range of students. Now, there's no question that the primary mission of this school is to provide greater capacity for excellent education for students who reside in North Nashville. That's a top priority. Uh, but the transportation plans are in place, and the particular uh, school uh, structure is in place, the K-8 structure, to offer a unique recruiting advantage, as well as the classical great books curriculum, which is popular. I'm sorry, I missed the locate. What was the location? The location will begin in East Nashville in the incubator facility. Two years there should allow them to grow to the capacity that they need to afford facilities, but their facilities search will then head to North Nashville. Okay. <clears throat> Starting in East Nashville, is that that's right? Yeah. right? Yes. Yes. Liberty. Yes. Where Liberty is now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. One other question, how much expansion will Liberty do this year, I mean, in order to be able to accommodate? They're adding another class this year. Okay. It's about what they have now, about 100. So we're looking pretty much at 300 students somewhere in that neighborhood? Yes. For both schools? Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Are we ready for the vote? All in favor, let it be known by saying hi. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Okay. Yes. Mr. Kendall has a question. Mr. Coverstone, uh, based the, I'm assuming that some, if not all, of those that we denied may be coming back to the board. Uh, would they be coming back on June? They were submitted by June 13th. Tell me what that process is. Yeah, the law gives uh, 15 days for resubmission and then gives us 15 days to evaluate those resubmissions and bring a recommendation back to you. So the way that works out, June, the end of June is the only time we can really get back to you. So this, this board would be looking at it rather than a, a new whatever. That's tr yes, yeah, that's correct. Comes back to the board. board. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. I have a question as well to the um, applications that we're rejecting. Each of those will get a detailed report as to the shortcomings so that they can fix them and re resubmit if they so desire. Correct. The report that you received will be distributed to them in the morning uh, along with any additional commentary that, that Carol has kept track of during the course of this evening. Uh, and Carol and our, our office will be available to work through um, you know suggested changes with with applicants obviously we can't do all of that work we can't do any of that work for them but to, in, 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 to ensure that they understand as best we can where you're coming from and what the basis of the decisions are so that they can resubmit accordingly okay, thank you I just, I just, hey, Mr. Kendall? Is just a question for clarification sure when we discussed the great hearts application or when you made your recommendation I think one of the things you mentioned was that Great Hearts wanted to open five schools, is that correct? Yes, sir. And that this proposal is to open five schools and be approved at this point, or is that five schools year after year after year? They are at, no, they are asking to open one school a year from now, but to open the subsequent four schools in subsequent years. But you're saying we don't have that authority. We don't, have the, we don't have the process in place by which to say what the benchmark would be for them to have another school, and there's no proposal for that. 
Any other questions for Mr. Coverstone? Seeing none, thank you so very much. And I want to personally say thank you to um, Dr. Brannon because she read every application. And how many did we have, Mr. Coverstone? Ten. Ten. And, and Dr. Brannon spent countless hours, and it's not easy, ladies and gentlemen, because I've served on, on that committee before, and it takes a lot of your family time. So we want to publicly say thank you, Dr. Brannon, for your, your help. Yes, we need to give her a round of applause. Thank you, Mr. Coverstone, your office for uh, working so diligently with this process as well. And now we move on into the director's report. Madam Chair and members of the board, I'll be very brief tonight since, uh, since we've had a, a long discussion and uh, in depth of a uh, very serious topic. I, I only have one thing I'd like to call to the attention of the board and that's the uh, retirement of Dr. June Keel and uh, I want to recognize June for many years of service to Metropolitan Nashville Public Schools as Assistant Superintendent uh, for Human Resources. Uh, she's been a, a, a great assist to me as I've come into the district. Uh, she's got great institutional knowledge of processes and procedures and the district <clears throat> that, that can't be replaced at this point in time. So. <clears throat> June, June's actually already off. Uh, she's, she, her retirement date is the end of this month, and she's taking vacation the last few days, but June came, June came back uh, to be at this meeting, and so please join me in, in recognizing and welcoming June here. June's made many speeches to this board, so we will not ask June to make a speech tonight. June, we wish not you the very, we wish you the very fast, best as you move forward. Not unless you really feel pressed to do. You, if you want to give a speech, you can give a speech. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, and and uh, Dr. Kill, we certainly from the from the board, we certainly appreciate what you have given to this district, and also uh, accommodating to the board in anything that we ask. You came forth with it, so we are going to truly miss you, and we wish you the best. Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Okay. Um, I don't have a report today, but um, possibly in the next uh, week or so, we'll talk about some of uh, the conferences that we've been to, and um, including the one in Cincinnati, the yeah. conferencing, collective um, conferencing conference we attended with um, Arnie Dunking and his staff from Washington, D.C. this week. Um, there's a lot going on in Metro schools, ladies and gentlemen, and I want to say I couldn't be any prouder um, than I was doing graduation. And when you have schools that graduates, 100% of their seniors it speaks volumes. And I want to give um, East and I think Middle College, and there may be more, that have graduated 100% of their seniors. And I think that's, a, that's something to be uh, rectified with, with our school district. We are doing wonderful things. Um, we've had a couple of um, articles about us in Education Week, and it's not easy to get in Education Week which they talked about our choices, our charter school and other things and magnet schools that, are, that we have in this district. And so I think we're making wonderful strides. We um, commend the office, all the teachers, principals, everyone involved in what's happening in this school district. And our board, I want to say thank you to all of you because a lot of things could not happen in this district without a school board that works together. This is not an announcement, but I want to just piggyback on what you were saying. I think the graduation period is probably the most exciting period that I have on the Board of Education Absolutely. to see young people, you know, with smiles on their faces, some of them with tears in their eyes. But I uh, attended four high school graduations, but the, 
the best graduation I attended was some kindergartners moving up to first grade. <laughs> and they had on the little caps and gowns, and I didn't have mine on, so I went and borrowed one <laughs> to put on so I could be dressed like, like they were. But that was, that was fantastic. Okay, uh, one or two announcements before we depart. Uh, one is that um, we will have our budget hearing. Uh, that's MMPS will have its budget hearing with the Metro Council on Wednesday, June 6th at 4.15 p.m. And if you can be there, let's try and um, really uh, support Mr. Henson and, and uh, all the others that will be sharing at that point. Um, and also, the next board meeting will be June 12th and June 26th, and we will have a regular board meeting at, um, at the 26th meeting. This will not be a work session. It will be a regular board meeting. Okay? Mr. Kendall, you have the opportunity oh, boy, tonight. I've been promoted. <laughs> You've been promoted. <laughs> okay. Uh, Got how to make that motion. Oh, move, we adjourn. <laughs> All in favor, leave. Thank you so very much.